welcome to Film Night. Coming up on tonight's show, Star Wars Special Edition is this week's 20th anniversary re-release, the film event of the year, or just more sound and fury signifying nothing. We walk the thin blue line with radical American documentary filmmaker Errol Morris and preview his latest work, Fast, Cheap and Out of Control. Brian Eno reveals why Stanley Kubrick's 18th century epic, Barry Lyndon, is the source of one of his favourite film scenes. And I'll bring you our guide to the films of the week on the big and small screen. This week, the George Lucas Empire strikes back with the release of Star Wars Special Edition, an all-new digitally enhanced print of the original film. 20 years after it exploded onto the big screen, it's still one of the most watched films of all time. It created a new film genre, the special effects movie, stylistically defined by wham-bam editing, ear-splitting sound and jaw-dropping computer effects. These days, the Star Wars legacy lives on in films such as Independence Day, Jurassic Park and the new volcano disaster movie, Dante's Peak. But should Lucas have left well alone? To assess just how special his Star Wars Special Edition really is, we spoke to Barry Armour, Chief Technical Director at George Lucas's special effects company, Industrial Light and Magic, critic Kim Newman and the man himself. For an entire generation, people have experienced Star Wars the only way it's been possible, on the TV screen. But if you've only seen it this way, you haven't seen it at all. Now, for its 20th anniversary, the adventure of a lifetime returns to the big screen. Star Wars was designed to be a theatrical experience. It was designed to be on the big screen. Sound is extremely important. And it's very uh, important to the overall enjoyment of the film that it be big. Traditionally, our role has been to enhance uh, the vision of the director um, uh, to accomplish things that they can't do live and on set, whether it's a map painting put up in front of the camera or something done entirely in post production. It's always, uh, you know, to serve the director's vision. The history of uh, the, the fantastical or the adventurous in cinema has been tied up with uh, developments in, in technology, uh, uh, always at, at, at very best when um, linked in with, you know, a really strong artistic vision or uh, a story worth telling. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. Certainly when Star Wars came along in the, the 70s, um, the use of technology, of effects, um, changed completely. Also, uh, the, uh, the ecology of the business changed completely. It, it created the notion of the summer blockbuster picture that the studio would put all their money in in the hope of making vast amounts of money back. Yes, it was the blockbuster. It was, um, it was the standard that everybody now had to meet. Look at the size of that thing. That's the channel, Red 2. Accelerate to attack speed. The new kids who've been brought up on films like this and for whom Star Wars is a rather tame, passe, old-fashioned movie um, will experience you know, what their parents felt. It was George's idea. I mean, it was his film. Uh, he certainly uh, had the, the right, uh, morally, financially, to make whatever changes he wanted to. <laughs> there were things that, that were missing in it the, the, that he's been able to, to fix. Right here, Jabba. Even the, just the one scene that was added with Jabba introduces that character and the conflict between Han and Jabba in a lot more uh, evident uh, a way. The inclusion of one big new scene, the scene with, with uh, Jabba the Hutt, uh, computer generated, um, on one level, you know, it's nice to see it, and, uh, and I'm sure it, uh, it serves to convince you that you are seeing a different film. Look, Jabba, next time you want to talk to me, come see me yourself. Don't send one of these twerps. But no matter how much they fiddle with it, it's exactly the same movie. 
Our it's all on the screen. There's nothing behind the screen. There's nothing to make you think or trouble you. In fact, the whole planet is destroyed halfway through. Yeah, we're told that billions of people have been destroyed, but we don't know them. We don't really care about them. Yeah, we're much more upset by yeah um, other yeah by a cute robot falling over than by the the deaths of multitudes. That may not entirely be, be a good thing for our culture. For me. I got to remake the movie and get it to be finished the way I want, so I'm perfectly happy. It's a shame that Lucas chose to, to fix the aspects of Star Wars that weren't broken. Wouldn't it have been better to use computer technology to, uh, to make emotions register on Mark Hamill's face? I want to learn the ways of the Force and become a Jedi like my father. And to dub in really good dialogue uh, and, and to maybe make the characters more complicated. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. I'm sure George Lucas is dreaming of the day when uh, yeah, his computer will generate the actors as well and pr probably come up with a script. The Force will be with you always. Well, I'm not sure if the force is with me, but I have been joined now by Graham Linehan, one of the creators of the hit comedy series Father Ted, and who also writes for film magazine Neon. Graham, you're a huge fan of Star Wars, aren't you? Well, yeah, I mean, in the same sense that everyone my age is a, a huge fan of Star Wars, you can never really shake it. You know, it's always imprinted on the inside of your eye. You How know? many times have you seen it? I'm sure I've seen it about ten times, but I think, that, I think that's fairly normal for, for a 29-year-old. Mm. If you see it, if you see it at, at nine, then it's your, all your pores are open, it's the perfect time to see it, and you never recover from it. Did it kind of change your view of the world then? Yeah, it did. It, it, totally, it totally altered me. I think it led to uh, an obsession with, with, with science fiction, and uh, you know, that led on to just a, a love of movies and a love of writing, uh, reading. And, yeah. and, and as well as that, I, I always felt that you know, when you're a kid, you always think that everything is great. Whatever film you're taken to is wonderful. And, mm -hmm. and I remember afterwards, Battlestar Galactica came out, and I, I remember thinking, this is ta, <laughs> you know, this is the worst film I've ever seen. And it was my first critical judgment. <laughs> well, the crit critical fact is fully in gear now. You're a grown up and you've just seen the Star mm. Wars special edition. What yeah. did you think? It's so simple. It's such a simple story. Does it and seem all dated? Things, it, it does. Well, the haircuts seem dated. It's like it, the haircuts are astonishing. You know, it's amazing the way that the 70s always dates, but no other, no other decade in history seems to date quite as badly. It's still powerful in, in many ways. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of, I, I, I was always amazed by the amount of technical detail that went into, you know, into what is really silliness, you know, like the idea that the sand people always travel single file to hide their numbers, which mm -hmm. I'm sure George Lucas probably got by researching battles of the past or, or you know, armies of the past and so on. So I like that kind of, that level of, of research. What do, you, what do you make of the changes then, for example, the, the Jabba the Hutt scene as we've seen? I enjoyed that. I, I thought that was great fun. Um, uh, they do have the effect of bouncing you out of the film. They, they kind of, um, if you're an adult watching it, what they do is they just, they keep you alert. You're always on the lookout. You can't remember whether you've seen that before mm -hmm. or whether that's, whether, you know, the Does that enhance your enjoyment at all? Is it a no. bit anarchy? You go, oh, there's a new bit. I think, I think it, I don't think it enhances your enjoyment. As I say, I think it, it kind of removes you from the film and it, it, it reminds you that it's a film and it's, uh, it's unfortunate. It would take, uh, but having said that, I think for, if you saw it for the first time, if you're a kid seeing it, I think it will, will absolutely, it will have exactly the same effect that uh, Star Wars had on me when I was a kid because the, the amazing thing about it is that the kind of effects that are used are sort of Jurassic Park style effects, but they're not used for anything in the foreground, they're used for background detail. And there's going to be kids just thinking, why, is it, why didn't they make a film about that thing? You know? So it's like, I mean, there's, there's just some wonderful moments going on in the background. And that's all it is, it's just texture, and kids are going to be astonished by that. Just very briefly, I mean, this is the first of many films as well as the, the other films in the trilogy. There's going to be the re-digitally mastered Godfather, Das Boot, and so on. Graduate. 25 years, and The Graduate too. Cynical ma marketing exercise, or what? I don't know, it, it would be if, if they get Jabba the Hutt in each of them. I'd like to see Jabba the Hutt in The Graduate, that would be nice. Runs yes. down the aisle with Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> yeah. Could be a but good one. Jabba! But, um, no, I... I, I, <laughs> I I don't know. I think it's like um, it is like uh, when they brought out CDs and everything got repackaged. I'm sure people will, you know, will go along to see. But on, on the other hand, it's great to see some of these films in the cinema. You know, it's terrible it has to be making some cynical people a lot of money. But you know, it's good to see films in the cinema. Graham Linton, thanks very much indeed. Cheers. Thank you. You can see the first part of the re-release trilogy nationwide from the 21st of March. The Empire Strikes Back and the Return of the Jedi are released in April.